one billion years in the future, Earth still exists, though maybe not as we imagine it. Eras upon bygone eras worth of technology have been left behind by eight previous and fallen civilizations. It is now up to the denizens of the Ninth World to piece together what was left behind. Perhaps they're looking to carve out their place in the world, or simply to survive a land riddled with weird and unearthly dangers. Or perhaps still, they just wish to learn and uncover the secrets of the Numenera. Whatever it is this new era of adventurers and heroes is looking to discover, they'll have to dig through the imprinted echoes of the past to find it. An amnesis. Noun. The recollection or remembrance of the past. Reminiscence. Hello, and welcome to Imprinted Echoes, a family-friendly Numenera actual play podcast. I'm Zan, and I'll be your GM. Thanks for joining us today, and as always, we hope you're staying safe and healthy. Negotiations in the ruins have turned hostile, and when Nehemiah fires a staggering shot at Amiri, tensions reach an all-time high. Strategies are tested, fears are exploited, and abilities are pushed to their limits. Join us as Nehemiah, Smallren, and Jory meet their match. The crossbow bolt that Nehemiah shoots pierces through the gaseous cloud that has been separating you from the other party down in the ruins, coating itself in the poison that Smallrin had originally created and hitting Amiri, the leader of this group, squarely in the chest, knocking him back, and all chaos breaks loose. A number of people are grabbing things. Everyone is prepping themselves for the fight to come. Raven, the person who is at the center console, starts grabbing things out of her bag and calls for the broad-shouldered man, who she calls Zerk, who triggers his armor to start unwrapping itself in silvery metal tendrils that he then starts swirling around like whips. And you hear Falco from the corner that you couldn't see around the edge of where the door is say, Oh, gods. And I would like everybody to roll initiative, please. As for the NPCs that are with you, because there are four enemies that I'm going to be tracking as well, I have broken them down into things that they can do to help you over the course of the combat. On Brex's turn, you can decide if they will give an attack or defense asset to everybody for the round. Tana is not necessarily the fighting sort, but has a delve ability called Foil Danger, where she can negate the damage from a singular source. And there are two uses of that that she can do over the course of this combat. If you are trying to taunt or trick or in some way create like an opportunity for someone with that, draw the enemy towards you, um, trick them into doing something, fake them out, Tana will give an asset to that. And then Lakra will not engage in combat unless there is something that is endangering or threatening the structure or themselves. Otherwise, they will provide two uses of a five-point heal mm. over the course. So you can choose to use that whenever. All right. The initiative starts off with Amiri, the leader who is now on the ground with a crossbow bolt square in their chest. Picking themselves up a little bit off the ground on like one of their elbows, they grab a sword from the side of their belt. And rather than try to slash or swing with it, they almost use it like a magic wand or a staff and they point it at Nehemiah. Hmm. And a large plasma blast comes out of it. All right. Plasma sword. <laughs> it is indeed a plasma sword. It can be used as a sword too. Go ahead, and this is going to be a level five mm -hmm. speed defense. Failure with an eight. Okay. The plasma bolt hits you almost in the exact same place that your crossbow bolt hit them. Mm -hmm. It inflicts six points of damage and ignores one of your armor. Ooh, okay. As you see some of that beast skin armor that you have almost melt away mm -hmm. a little bit as the blast hits you. Nehemiah is more surprised than anything at that point and then squares up. Lakra 
stands by, does not do anything in the moment, is simply watching as they said they would. Mm -hmm. Nehemiah, you're up. I'm going to go in to get a little bit of retribution at this point, and I will go ahead and make the attack on this guy. He said difficulty five? Correct. Okay, I will spend for a point of effort. That is a success with an 18. Wonderful. Plus two damage on uh, what I normally do. So eight damage. Wonderful. Some of that is negated by the armor that Amiri has, but that is more than enough to take them out. Uh What does your finishing blow on this jerk look like? Nehemiah gets caught in the chest, looks down, looks up, and just runs, plants the sword staff in right back in the center of the staff, overlapping the bolt, and just bowls them back over onto their back, and then pushes in. Amiri's body hints the ground with that Mm -hmm. familiar thud. Nehemiah looks around. All right, who's next? As that happens, you hear Falco, who now you can see against the wall, scream. Mm -hmm. Smallrin, it's your turn. Remind me, what was the name of the one that was playing with the control panel? Raven. Raven. They're the one who started rummaging things out of their pack, correct? Correct. Awesome. Um... They're close enough I can get over there, right? This isn't that big of a room. Yep, everyone is within a short distance. You can get anywhere in this room within your turn. All right. I'm going to do the small run thing where while everyone is kind of focusing on Nehemiah, who is being very flashy and drawing a lot of attention. Thank you, friend. Mm -hmm. She is going to move as quickly and as silently as possible through the space. And basically two of her seven daggers, one in each hand, slip behind Raven and kind of put one to her ribs and one to her throat and just kind of whisper in her ear, I wouldn't do that. Hands up. And I'm going to spend for intense interaction, which gives me an asset on intimidating, persuading, and influencing people for 10 minutes. Okay, that's going to be a level four intimidation then. Something I just realized looking at my sheet that I had forgotten to put down is one of my tier one advancements was giving myself the skill persuasion, oh, yeah. which I did not actually add to my sheet. <laughs> so that probably could have been useful any time in the last however long it's been since I was tier one. Yeah. Anyway. How many opportunities have we missed to be worship? Right? <laughs> How many god. more people could we have convinced that one of us was a god? Cool. So I'm going to go ahead and going to spend for a point of effort as well. I'm feeling it. Success with a 10. You feel her flinch under your two blades, tense up, and her left hand that was not necessarily in her bag yet comes up. The other one does as well. Are they empty currently? Is is there anything in her right hand? Roll perception. Level four. Since I am trained in perception because of my Ogrim orb, um, I'm going to mentally be like, check it. Yeah. <laughs> Give my little guy something to do. Ooh, 20. Her hand is technically empty. She's not holding anything, but she twists a little bit one way. And you can see that on her palm, the way that you might like palm a card for a card trick is palming some sort of patch or adhesive square. I'm going to keep the dagger that I have at her throat, but the one that I have against her ribs, which is on that side, I'm basically going to bring it up and try to like scrape or flick whatever it is out of her hand. I will let that be your major effect. Yeah. All right. Thank you. You are able to kind of like flick it off with the dagger and it slaps onto the ground and you hear her curse under her breath. Now, what was that? You'll figure it out. For Raven's turn, Smallrin, you have your daggers to her throat and ribs, and I need you to roll a Might Defense level four. Okay. I'm going to go ahead and spend for a point of effort, because I'm not trained in anything close to Might. (laughs) Success with a 14. You realize that as you have your daggers there, there is some sort of energy beginning to build up around her in this halo of some sort of elemental 
something. You're not quite exactly sure what it is, but it looks like it'll be painful and you're able to pull back soon enough before it envelops you being so close to her. Okay. And now that halo of energy is kind of just around her, giving this soft but menacing glow. That's fun. When I step away, I want to try and keep myself between her and that patch. Mm -hmm. Nehemiah, the large man who rivals you in size, Mm. probably not quite as big as you, but probably about as strong, takes a step forward and those metal tendrils wrapped around his wrists as they had kind of uncoiled from what looked like armor around him. He whips one of those tendrils out to wrap around your arm to try and keep you stationary. Mm -hmm. Uh, Please make a... Level four, speed defense. I will go ahead and spend to get a point of effort, and we will roll. And that'll be in success with a natural 20. (sighs) I'm knocking on wood. I'm knocking on wood. Knock on all the wood. I I don't know. We're not saying anything else. We're not saying anything. (laughs) The one thing I will say is that if I was playing with my group and they were rolling these numbers, and I, like, because we roll all of these in in roll 20, so everybody right. can see everything. Right. We can't fake this. Mm-hmm. Okay, cool. So uh, it misses. <laughs> yeah, so this metal tendril comes out and tries to like wrap around your arm. How do you get away? I think Nehemiah just like drops to the ground for a second and has the tendrils kind of flash over. Can I have uh, whatever attack was going to hit me hit one of the other people in the fight? Ooh, sure. Yeah, maybe just have it crash right into Raven since I think we're all kind of in the same neck of the woods. You duck down and rather than hitting you, it goes straight over you and hits Raven instead for that five points of damage. (laughs) And it hits her right in the face and she, again, curses and screams and yells, watch where those things are being thrown, Zerk. You're in trouble. (laughs) Jory, you are still kind of standing just in the doorway. Your compatriots have kind of run in to try and work with things and you hear a growl as the Thuman that Zerk had with him comes up and tries to bite at your legs. Go ahead and make a level two speed defense. Success with a six. You are able to jump out of the way of the bite. These are not particularly vicious creatures, but they are exceedingly loyal. It is Falco's turn. Falco with tears streaming down her face just makes a guttural, not quite scream, like yell almost. And Nehemiah, I need you to make an intellect defense roll level four. Spend uh, another point there to try and keep this going here. It's a failure with a five. What is something that Nehemiah has faced before? A creature that absolutely terrified him. It's that mob boss that we ran into in the tumult. That one that that like... Nehemiah called out and then dodged every one of his attacks and Small Ren had to take it out. Nehemiah has never encountered something like that and maybe never will again. Otarsh, the ostentatious oboe. Okay. Nehemiah, your ears fill with that oboe song. You haven't heard that sense the tumult, and that is the only thing you can hear right now. You normally, in combat, you can hear your heartbeat, you can hear the sounds of weapons, you can hear feet on the ground, but the only thing in your ears is that terrible oboe melody. Okay. Okay. The only instinct you have right now is to run. Mm -hmm. Oh, this is not gonna go well. (sighs) It is Brex's turn. Mm -hmm. So on Brex's turn, you can decide whether or not you will get an attack or defense asset for the entirety of the round up till their turn again. Mm -hmm. Do you think attack or defense? I think defense is probably the way to go. Okay. Okay. Brex comes up next to Nehemiah and takes on a very defensive and protective position. Mm -hmm. Normally that's one that the two of you are taking together. Mm But this time, Brex feels as though they have to protect Nehemiah. Mm. Then there's Tana, who, again, not great at fighting, but is ready to help negate things if need be. She is just kind of being a cheerleader on the side right now. Like, when Amiri dies, she goes, That serves you right! Jory, it's your turn. Oh dear. So sorry, what's the name of the thing that's on me? 
A thumen. Uh, thank you, thank you. I knew it started with a T. I'll give it a thwack. I'll give it a thwack. Okay. I'm gonna th- That's going to thwack. be thwack. a... Thumen. Stop it. Stop it. Just like a newspaper. Nope. No, no, no. Nope. Uh, success with a 13, that's four damage. All right. You whack it with your staff just kind of right on the head, right on top of the nose. Stop it, stop it. And it whimpers and cowers away for a moment. Oh, now I feel kind of bad. It did try to I know, I know, I know. I'm pushing that back. It's at bay. It's not its fault. It was poorly trained. (laughs) That's true. Anything else you would like to do then? Um, no. I just have an idea for something if it comes up, but that's fine. I'm going to keep this thing from... uh, I'm also trying to protect Tana, I think, just kind of generally. Okay. Nehemiah, top of the round. It's your turn. The details of your fleeing are entirely up to you. Um, Nehemiah... Like, you see his eyes go wide, and he just starts saying, you can't hear, can you all hear it? Can you all, and he just starts running for the door they came in, back towards the 3D printer room. Sure. There is no one right next to you at the moment, so Mm -hmm. there is no situation where you might be stopped Mm -hmm. or impeded. You do make it, I'll say, just out the door. Mm -hmm. That is your turn, then. Smallrin. Smallrin's going to put one of her daggers down, catch the corner of her, like, kind of cloak coat that she wears in her hand, and use that almost like it's a, a hanky or something to pick up the patch that she flicked out of Raven's hand, sure. not knowing what it is. Looking at it a little closer, you recognize you've seen patches like this as ciphers, things that you could apply to the skin to activate to have a certain effect. You're just not sure what the effect not sure is. What it does. All right. And she's got some kind of force field around her, correct? Not so much a force field. It's not something that would negate or stop damage. It is more like a destructive energy field. Gotcha. Okay. Something that will hurt you if you touch it. If I touch it. It's not going to stop damage. Cool. Good to know. I'm going to try to do something tricky. I understand this is probably going to be a high check. And I'm cool if it doesn't work. Okay. Smallrin is going to take the dagger that she still has out, pin the patch to the end, like the very tip of it. Like knowing how these work, she finds like a portion of it that won't be affected by being cut. And like put pins it on the end of the dagger and then throws the dagger at Raven. (laughs) Okay. Okay. So this will be your... Regular level four, I'm going to take it up to a level six. So four for normally hitting her. One more for trying to make it hit correctly and and actually activate. Mm -hmm. And another for hitting specifically on a part of her body. Can I use my training and perception tasks to help aim properly? Sure. All right. Total of a... Level six with whatever you're applying there. So I'm going to spend for that point of effort. I have training and perception tasks. Who let's see if we can do this. 12 or better. Ooh, failure with a seven. You throw the dagger and I'll say the dagger hits. So you will deal some damage, but the cipher is whatever energy is around her. It sparks and like burns it out and it does not activate. So that's two damage with a dagger, correct? Two damage with a dagger, yes. Hey, I mean, at least she can't use it. That's true. It is Raven's turn. She turns on her heel and pulls some of that energy from around her, creating like almost a disc of it flat in front of her. And she then almost like grabs it, like hand over hand, flattens it, and then throws it like a frisbee at you. Please make a level four speed defense. All right. Success with a 10. You are able to duck out of the way as that energy disc speeds past you. Humming frisbee of danger. Yes. And you can feel electricity or heat, but you feel something not great as it kind of just whizzes past the side of your head. What does it do when it hits whatever it hits after it flies past me? So it flies past you and it actually dissipates at a certain distance. Oh, interesting. Like an immediate range yeah. thing. Can I ask my Ogren orb to calculate what that distance from her is? About 15 feet. All right. It's not to say that she doesn't also have other things long distance. Right, but, but still, it's good to know. Zerk is going to make another attack. 
Uh, oh no, Nehemiah left the Nehemiah's room. Nehemiah's out there. Never mind. So Zerk instead is going to follow where his Thuman went and peek around the corner and try to hit Jory. Okay. <laughs> Please make a level four speed defense. I would love you to. You do get an that. asset from Brex. Oh, goody. Success with an 11. The Thuman being there complicates things a little bit. Uh, yes. And Zerk is trying to not hit his companion, and in doing so, it does not connect with you. Oh, well. He also attacks Tana. <gasps> oh, that's just rude. <laughs> does hit her and deals five points of damage Ow. to Tana. All right, that is Zerk's turn. Uh, it's the Thuman's turn, who's going to take another bite at Jory. So, Jory, with Brex being there, please go ahead and make a level two speed defense, which you really just have to roll a three or better. Ah, uh, 18. It's just annoying now. You're able to step out of the way of that Thuman who is just kind of nipping no, at off. your ankles. Stop, stop it. I, th- I said stop it. Don't you remember the thwaps from earlier? <laughs> Brex has... Determined that Smallrin can probably handle herself <laughs> and instead has kind of come up behind Zerk to try and help with that situation. I don't know why I picture that so funny, just this giant thing slowly walking up behind somebody like... <laughs> Falco. Smallrin, from behind, kind of like over Raven's shoulder, you see... Falco kind of gearing up for something. All the lights in this area flicker for a moment. Like they go out and come back on and they're just a little bit dimmer. And you see that light now in Falco's hands and she launches it at you. Level four, speed defense with an asset. Success with a 13. You see this light gear up and go searing towards you. Brex kind of looks over their shoulder and throws their shield to kind of like bounce it off and they meet halfway and the shield clashes the ground and the ball of light hits the shield and almost like shatters into little light shards. (laughs) Tana does have a turn. She spends it trying to see to the wound that she has been dealt. Do you want to keep Brex having asset to defense or switch to asset to attack? I'm good with keeping it for defense. I am too. I feel like it's been pretty useful. So, All right. So now Joy's turn. I'm going to strike the Thuman again. Okay. It's a level two. You know what? No, no, I won't. I won't. Okay. Can't fight my nature. Um, uh, Zerk (laughs) it is. Okay. That is a level four. Fine. Might. And failure with 10. As you go to hit him with your staff, one of those tendrils just kind of like pushes it out of the way. Like just almost like a deflect from a sword or what you might see like a monk do with their arm. It just pushes the staff away and uses that inertia to have it hit the ground. At least this time I didn't lose it. Nope, you're still holding on to it. I will take that. That's why I practiced earlier. It's fine. (laughs) Amaya. The oboe sounds fade, and you find yourself just past Jory and Tana down the hallway, but it is no longer ringing in your ears, and you have your senses about you again. Nehemiah takes deep sigh, gauging about what happened there, turns around to, you know, things like, oh, gotta take care of Falco now. Oh, nope, there's someone in my way. <laughs> Nehemiah's gonna go after Zerk. All right, level four, Mike. Okay, I am trained in this, and I am going to spend a point of might get some effort, and we roll, and that's success with an 11. Beautiful. How do you hit? What does this look like? Nehemiah just wheels around, runs, and then uh, takes a quick little leap and kicks off on the wall, very monk-like again, and just lunges into Zerk. Okay. Those metal tendrils solidify a little bit onto his body again. Zerk does have two armor. Okay. All right. Small run. I think I'm going to ignore Raven for the moment and actually focus on Falco. Okay. Pull out another dagger and throw it. Because so, Falco's still kind of on the floor in the corner, right? She has not. Falco has not moved. moved at all. No. Actually, no. She doesn't want to risk uh, not being able to get another dagger back. She's feeling. She, she's <laughs> fond of her no, dagger hold collection. Hold on. Hold on. So Smallrin collects daggers, not so she can use them, just so she can have them? Maybe. <laughs> They're her trinkets. <laughs> are my trinkets. <laughs> she also, oh, she does man. have an other 
long range weapons. So she's going to keep the dagger so that if she needs to, she can stab someone with them while they're close to her. She's going to pull out the buzzer and uh, sure. go ahead and take aim and fire at Falco in the corner. Right, that will... Perfect. Level four, speed. Ooh, failure with an eight. Should have gone with the dagger. The buzzer jams a little bit. It's one of the 3D printed discs, isn't it? Yeah, it is. It was. It's just a little bit too thick and it jammed into that slot. So it does shoot, but instead of going that nice long distance, it kind of just like flops out and goes maybe three feet in front of you. Mm, that's so disappointing. Smallman kind of turns and gives a disapproving look to the buzzer. <laughs> <laughs> we'll talk about How this later. Dare you? She puts it back on her belt. <laughs> All right, anything else, Smallrin? I'm trying to remember. Had they said something about Falco being hurt when we were kind of overhearing their conversation? Yeah, when you look a little bit closer, you see that Falco only has one shoe on at the moment and had been trying to treat a very familiar looking wound <laughs> on the bottom of her foot. Ah, uh, yes. So she has that injury and has also fallen prey to your poison. It's so nice to know when things work properly. <laughs> Unlike some of my tools. <laughs> <laughs> Dang, buzzer. <laughs> Raven then is going to launch the same attack that she did previously on you, Smallrin. Level four, speed defense with an asset from Brex. I'm going to spend for a point of effort because I really don't want to find out what this does. Success with a six. <laughs> That is literally the lowest you could possibly roll and still make that work. Once again, it flies past you. So this asset from Brex, what do you think Brex did this time to help you out? Because they don't have their shield anymore. It's kind of on the floor at the moment. What are your thoughts on how Brex might help you here? I think Brex just like visually does something to alert Smallren. I think that they throw a hand up or just like w like get her attention and she turns in time to to see the because I'm, I'm assuming that there's enough of a disturbance in the air I can like physically see something coming at me oh yeah yeah, yeah. so yeah Rex gets smaller attention in time that she's able to turn and like just barely duck out of the way Brex actually takes their maul and swings it over their head once and slams it down onto the ground, making a terrible thud. And that absolutely gets your attention. You turn over your shoulder just in time to see this energy disc floating towards you and you duck or dive out of the way. Zerk's turn. I need Nehemiah and Jory to both make a level four speed defense as these tendrils start whipping out at you again. Oh, fail with a five. Fail with a four. Ooh, we're gonna be wrapped together. It'll be nice. Mm. <laughs> it hits both of you mm -hmm. and you both take five mic damage. Okay. And then I both need you to make a level four might defense roll. Okay, after armor, that is three. Mm -hmm. And a might defense roll, you say? Yes. All right. Weirdly success with a 17. Yeah, weirdly also success with a 15. <laughs> Wonderful. The tendrils hit you and they hit hard, but they do not wrap around you. You're able to either shift or duck or maneuver your way out of the way of getting those wrapped around you. Mm -hmm. It will hit Tana again, unless someone wants to do something about that. Uh, can Tana use uh, her foil danger on herself? She can. Ooh. Let's have her do that. Okay. Tana is very much like Jory, a delve, someone who likes looking for things, but not so much a tinkerer necessarily. Mm. Not someone who puts things together, but likes finding things and learning about them. She has spent the last little bit of time learning as much as she can by watching Zerk and the way those tendrils operate. And she pulls out literally just a piece of sheet metal that she had like in her pouch that she had carried along and it deflects off of it, noting the angle and the way that it kind of like glanced off of other things in the area and uses almost like geometry to try and push it back towards the other way and she's able to get out of that. All right, so you have used one of Tana's foil danger. Mm -hmm. Very good. Nice job. Thuman. Jory. Thuman. <laughs> Thuman is still going at the, after you. Please roll. It is a level two speed defense with the asset from Brex. Okay. And success with a 10. Thuman is really just annoying at this point. <laughs> it's trying so hard. It is. It's trying real hard, y'all. I'm kind of God, proud so 
<laughs> but very also irritated. Jory's going to adopt another stray not dog, isn't she? Hmm. <laughs> I'm, I'm going to have to open some kind of a... We already have the egg. Well, there's already the egg. There's yep. Blue, who's back in oh, Lagam. Yep. I'm not going to do this retroactively. I meant for every time Jory takes damage for there to be an egg roll as well. <laughs> but I will not do that retroactively. So not the We'll egg. do that if Jory takes damage again. Mm. Do love a good egg roll. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I did not realize what I had said until you said it back to me. But- Listen, we're coming up on that season. Egg roll season? Isn't isn't egg roll like an Easter thing? I think I mean, double eggs are I, an Easter I, thing. I I thought it was more like I'm, with Chinese I food. Think, yeah. Oh, I'm. You know what I'm there doing? It is. I'm I'm mixing up the idea of like an egg and spoon race and a cheese roll. <laughs> I'm just. I was just picturing people like rolling eggs across a lawn with no, like a stick. Like, that <laughs> no, is also a they thing. They do. They do That's that. But I, I don't know if it's called an egg roll. Is it called an egg roll? I have heard it called. Like now that you mention it. <laughs> Like I, have I don't heard know that before, why that's where my mind went instead of the Chinese food <laughs> item, but <laughs> oh no! Okay, Chase, are you looking it up now? I, I can. <laughs> no, you can't. I, I thought you were no, looking something. No, you're good. that's so funny. I'm just about to things on my desk. Oh, fair. <laughs> All right. <laughs> whoa, whoa, whoa. Anyway, I apologies um, it, for that detour. <laughs> no, amazing. I'm keeping it. Yep. It's great. <laughs> It's Falco's turn, though, um, and Smallrin, you were in the room when Falco feasibly did something to Nehemiah. You have no idea what, because there wasn't anything physical for you to see. You saw her move, and then you see Nehemiah, like, scream and run. So you know something happened, but you don't know what. And now Falco makes those same movements towards you. And I need you to make me a level four intellect defense. And I will let the overcoming fear apply. Success with the 10. I ain't afraid of no ghost. What is something that Smallrin is scared of? Like a, a being or a creature or something physical? I'm trying to think if there's something specific that we have encountered. Do you have an idea? The jellyfish thing. Uh, yes, we'll go with the jellyfish. Because, yeah, it, it would be something physically overwhelming that she is not in a position to outsmart. For the briefest of moments, you feel a tightness in your chest. That same tightness that you felt when you were holding your breath for so long underwater in the cisterns under Legam. And in front of you, you see that strange, mostly transparent blob appear. And you have that split second of terror. But because it's transparent, you see through it a little bit and you see Falco manipulating her hands and you recognize this as an illusion. And you are able to push past the fear of this terrifying illusion affecting you. Because Smallrin can see through it and can see Falco manipulating it, I still have my intense interaction going. So I have assets on intimidating. It lasts for 10 minutes, 10 right? Minutes. Yeah. Well, that's that's something that'll be with my next turn. Basically, Smallrin's going okay. to react as though she is scared currently. Like, sh- like yep. facially, yep. physically, she's going to react as though this is working. Absolutely. Just for the effect, I'm going to have you roll a intellect deception level four. Okay. Can I use my asset from Intense Interaction for that? Yeah, 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 yeah. Can I use my training in espionage for the deception role? Sure. Yay, espionage. Ooh, GM intrusion failure with a one. Ooh. Smallrin's not okay. great at looking scared. Let's be honest here. <laughs> you know what? That's She's fair. just not good very lying. good at it. <laughs> she can lie all great day at long. Lying. But. Great at, at convincing people of things. Great at intimidating people. But pretending that she's scared? Mm. I don't know. She just doesn't doesn't have a great frame of reference for what her face feels like when she's scared. You are focusing so hard on trying to come off as terrified so that Falco can notice you that you don't notice Raven gearing up for another oh, attack. No. So Raven's going to get a out of her turn attack on oh, you no. and you do not get to use Brex's asset. <sighs> Level four speed defense. I don't want to know what this does. (laughs) 
All right. Hoo-hoo! Success with a 19. Minor effect or three damage. All right. I think purely by accident you get out of the way because there's no way you were going to see nope. it coming. But purely by accident, you either chance. step to the side or do something else. Minor effect thoughts? What is Raven attacking with? Their focus. Their, focus. their, their abilities. Gotcha. It is, they have an energy... It, manipulation ability. Is there any way that maybe Small Ren could disarm them or mess up whatever it is that they are using to focus to maybe ease up their next couple of, uh, you know, attacks or something on us? Actually, yeah. That, yeah. Could I have an asset when she attacks me because I recognize what it sounds like coming now? I will say for the next, because it's a minor yeah. effect, I will say for the next time. The next time, time she tries to attack me with that. She tries I, to use I that. I know what it sounds like now and I'll have, okay. Yeah, that works. Yeah. Not to like make this a challenge or anything, but I somehow have managed to take no damage yet this combat. <laughs> Must be nice. <laughs> Listen, look, I <laughs> not for lack of trying. Hey, look, that's what, what can I for. say? I've also, I've also like speaking of the jellyfish thing. Can we remember other times smaller and almost died? I'll take this. All right, it's Brex's turn. Continue on defense. Mm-hmm. Switch to attack. I think defense. Yeah, I want to get one or two more of these other names scratched off the list before we go into full aggro mode. Yeah, sure. You all stand here for a brief moment, seeing the situation you have in front of you, realizing that everything has gone completely sideways, hoping to everything you could feasibly hope to, that something's going to go in your favor soon. Thank you so much for listening to episode 92 of Imprinted Echoes and Amnesis. As always, if you'd like to follow the podcast on social media, You can find us on Twitter and Facebook at Imprinted Echoes and on our website, imprintedechoes.com. On our website, you can find links to the Ghostlight Media merch store and our Patreon if you're able to help us out monetarily. And in that vein, I'd like to thank Roger, JJ and Veronica, and Connor for their continued support. If you'd like to help us out in other ways, please take a moment to subscribe to the podcast, leave a rating and review, and tell a friend about the show. And of course, you can find our hosts on Twitter as well. Myself at Covered and Sawdust, Chase at TQ Loudly, Rin at Rin underscore Moran, and Bridget at Really Bridget. And be sure to follow our network, Ghostlight Media, at GLM Pods. Thank you once again for listening, and I hope you'll be back in two weeks to hear yet another episode of Imprinted Echoes. And until then, may your ciphers never malfunction. Imprinted Echoes is produced by Zan Campbell-Johannes and Chase Greenlee and is edited by Alex Berkowitz. Original show theme music is by Justin Longacre. This has been a Ghost Light Media production.